Hey, hey, it's ODB from OLP. You're looking at issue 87 of Mini Truck and Magazine. This is March 99. And uh, we have a lot to talk about. Great issue. Uh, if you can, check out our website, ourlifestylepodcast.com. You can buy merchandise, including these OG paying homage to Mini Truck and Magazine stickers and much, much more. So... With issue 87, you have the blue Mazda Cap Plus. This is one of my favorite trucks ever built. Uh, I think primarily because of the color. Uh, it does have some different kind of mods with the way the uh, the kind of the tonneau cover or the top of the bed is all molded shut. I think the color and just the standout with the centerline wheels is fantastic. Chanel Ryan is the model. And... This one is the fifth NC truck to grace the cover, including, if we count, Ghetto Bobs for the January 99 issue, kind of that group photo that Courtney took. Uh, of course, his is kind of front and center, as I mentioned uh, previously. This is the fourth cover truck with centerline wheels. And Derek Venstra, maybe is how you pronounce it. I apologize if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly. My understanding, uh, Jeff Davey told me years ago, a couple years back, rather, that he has since passed away. So, rest in peace, Derek. I know this truck did change hands in the late 90s, early 2000s. I saw it at Showfest 2000 when Frank owned it. And uh, let's jump into this issue. So, again, issue 87, March 99. We've got the EAI ad. And, of course, with them adding cars, uh, that, you know, was a lot of pieces um, that were for Hondas, Acuras, so on and so forth. So that that opened up the other piece that people may not realize it opens up the advertising. So you get about six or seven features in this one. Of course, tech, events, including Godfathers. So rest in peace, Hal from Godfather Customs. Uh, Oregon Super Show, SEMA 98, Slamming and Jamma, a lot of good stuff. Uh, here you see Paul Morton's name. Again, he uh, did assist with the magazine. We've had Paul on as well in the past. I uh, love this front three-quarter shot. So the, the the cover was a little bit different with the rear three-quarter shot, which I thought was still good. You got the mountainous uh, hill in the background and uh, just color-matched bathing suit. So it looks pretty awesome. This was probably the first time I remember them mentioning a website for the model, possibly. You see Chanel Ryan there. But Derek Venstras, home-built, mod-heavy 88 Mazda was... Uh, constructed for under 65 or 6,000 and that was something that was very unique and I'm sure a lot of us young mini truckers were um our interest was peaked because $6,500 cover truck I mean that to me like blew my mind I'm thinking to myself wow how you know but here's the key home built friends I'm sure all pitched in and and um again rest in peace Derek but uh, just love this color, one of my favorite color blues. Of course, the Cab Plus. You guys know I love some Mazdas. Kind of talked about that recently. Uh, far side, we did shoot, uh, we, we did share uh, some, a fo uh, what was it, a throwback photo, behind the scenes photo of this truck. And uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, just kind of a different look on it. I love how the uh, tag is Frenched in there across the body line. So we got the editorial. Uh, Courtney talks about, you know, learning things from these different companies and whatnot. You got the Godfather Custom ad, which obviously Hal and team spent a lot of money in advertising with this mag. Definitely detailed, so Chevy S10. Kind of a cool look. Looks like an Illinois plate. And you got the, what the Eagle Alloy wheels. pretty clean. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying these. I'm spacing them out a little bit more um, just to not uh, have too many videos posted each week. Got some good feedback on that and uh, really not trying to flood things, so to speak. But definitely the last couple weeks, I was trying to put the pedal down uh, to just get through these issues, but kind of feel good about where we're at. Issue 87. Uh, issue 88, of course, has an MIC connection to it. And uh, we'll be getting to that one soon. The recording of this is before Thanksgiving 2022. So everyone have a, a great Thanksgiving. This is Clinch Truck from Gardnerville, 
Nevada, and it's H-I-N-D-E-L-A-N-G. Uh, far side, and being a Mazda fan in general, I definitely dig this one. Super clean interior, a little bit of sculpture on the door panels. Suicide doors, so kind of mod heavy with the front tilt hood. Just good stuff. You got the far side right there on the front license plate. So uh, badass truck, and again we did shoot, uh, we did share a photo. Courtney shot this one. It's kind of a cool photo. Courtney standing up. I forget who shared it with us, but uh, we do try to uh, give credit when we can. Ninety nine percent of the time, I would say. Or we will put unknown. Uh, check out that the side swing fuel door. So d again, diff definitely different on this one. 2.2 liter engine, so 87 Mazda that looks like there. You got the uh, flame in the bed, the design. I wonder if this truck's still around, anyone know? And then the Zenith wheels, those always stuck out in my mind. They were a little bit different. Like when Raekwon said, seen it like a 27 inch Zenith, believe it. I think he says 27 inch. Those were the TVs back in the day. <laughs> I think they were the ones in the big brown cabinets too, weren't they? This is going deeper underground. Rear suspension made easy with the Pete and Jake's four bar and Firestone air spring. So this was uh, around the time uh, Rob Rodell Underground Customs, Round Rock, Texas. This was around the time I remember looking in the mag, trying to kind of figure out what to order. And Pete and Jake's was a name definitely, I'm sure, from this tech article and others that really stood out there. So Pete and Jake's Hot Rod and the Underground Customs. Around the time I was probably ordering my stuff to have Matt Torgerson bag it. Drove that truck a lot and it seemed like within a year ended up getting body dropped. Battle of the Imports. So we've seen some coverage from there. Kind of a rare appearance of a Tundra. T100 rather. Uh, there's the Bikini Calendars. No mini trucking, but Mustang trucking, street rider, and bike, of course. Sure, that was a de decent stream of revenue, uh, you know, even at $7 a piece, you know, depending on people looking for uh, holiday Christmas gifts and whatnot. Back in the day, I wonder how much revenue that brought in. Uh, here's Godfather Customs. So Mike Slade does this, and uh, I never got a chance to go to the show. If you did, chime in. If you know anybody that went... I always love these uh, high up photos. Now, of course, there's drones. It's a different game, but uh, you see the shop there. I think that was uh, Duck and those guys. Possibly just Duck. Um, but uh, see some of the trucks. This thing was always super clean. And you got the Nissan hard body here with the Topper Gang next level. Clean Mazda, a little bit different grill on it. Static drop, super clean. And then you got Duck here, Carrie, with uh, his famous truck we talked about when he was on the podcast. Always loved this thing. All the tweed on the dash. Kind of pretty badass. So pretty cool here to see some of these trucks that we're kind of seeing over and over from a show coverage standpoint, including this guy here, the custom shop, Geo Metro. This thing was clean. I shared a photo of that not too long ago. I think Kirk uh, had a photo that I scanned. Shout out to Kirk from No Regrets, Florida. Here's Ryan Cochran's truck on those, what, Inkies? And I uh, always love this truck too. Pretty cool. Thought it looked good. A lot of badass trucks, man. A lot of badass trucks, a badass era. So again, uh, if you can, leave a comment. Thumbs up, definitely, if nothing else. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Caribbean Cruiser. This thing, you look at the interior and just say, dude, super clean. Always loved when these sill plates were done. Also, in tweed, you had the dual paddle gauge deal. Or the uh, the dual needle gauge and the, the two paddles kind of facing the driver a little bit. All the uh, tweed done on the dash, of course, also on the steering wheel. 
Got a little bit of uh, pods there on the door. Looks clean. CD changer. Sunroof. A lot going on for a standard cab truck, man. Really nice. Super clean. Lance Marks shot this one. And then boom, because I can. I always thought it was awesome, man. You flipped right to it, and then boom. Um, what stood out to me is the blue paint. And again, I love this, um, the color, kind of that, that pinkish color uh, as the background. I think it just really pops. And when you see this rear three-quarter of this truck, I mean, it just doesn't get much badass than that. I mean, all shaved up. The, uh, you know, the, the bright work here, of course, on the Mazda. But uh, definitely, hands down, one of, you know, my favorite, if not favorite Mazda ever built. Uh, always love this shot, too. So you can see the rag top open there a little bit. And then there's uh, Derek's name, Low Buck Mazda. Talking about him and his friends that helped build it. And uh, on top of that, you know, the whole engine bay being painted, the brake booster, the timing cover, and then with the chrome accents, it really just didn't need much more than that. I mean, to me, that's th that was it. Then he looked at the interior and it was like, boom, okay, so you have the sculpture on the door panels. I always thought this was cool. He had the NC logo in here. Everything done in tweed. CD player. Just nicely done. I mean, I'd love to do my Mazda like this one day at some point. It may not even be tweed. It may just be something that looks like, you know, a nice material. But uh, either way, super clean. Got the centerline wheels, which I was a big fan of. I had a set of center lines originally on my S10. And then boom. Uh, love the trucks when they're cab pluses, so a little bit bigger. Of course, sunroof rag top rather and uh looks good and then Vesalia Cali wrapped the dash Derek's mom was involved Sandy laid the tweed on the truck's floor so really badass truck so again rest in peace to Derek that's our understanding that he passed away if you have any other information on that let us know but um you know, name went down in, in history here. Of course, Mini Truck and Magazine, the fifth NC vehicle to grace the cover. Uh, I remember the video that we shared of this. I've shared it a couple times, one with audio, one with uh, music, I think. And Steve Nielsen took the video and he mentioned uh, how long that they block sanded this thing to get it that smooth. And uh, Steve, of course... You know, you'd see here, Ultra Images roll pan. So I'm sure they had talked on the phone and said, hey, this thing's coming. That's the way news traveled back in those days. And the VHS, from all of the video that Steve would put together, you guys have heard me talk about that. He would send that out to some of his customers. I still have one. I've shared some of that, including of this truck. But uh, pretty epic times. I mean, that's just a way, even pre kind of street source or around that era, information traveled through the phone. And then, of course, VHS tape across the country. That's how we got a lot of our intel back in that day. It's kind of funny that I still remember some of that stuff. And when I went back and watched that VHS tape, I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. He spent less than 6500 on everything, including the purchase of the truck. I remember reading that just going, damn, dude, where did I go wrong? <laughs> Guys on the cover, blue. Just really awesome, but it comes down to, you know, people helping out, friends, kind of side deals and whatnot, and people coming over to the garage and helping, and it just kind of reinforces, uh, if you put your mind to it, as George McFly said, it, anything is possible. So really badass truck here again, topper level, uh, topper gang level up with that setup, pretty cool. So many Mazdas, S10s over the years. Super sweet Toyota. This thing was always clean. Saw a Toyota over near my house recently, like that, at a um, at a shop, uh, automotive shop. And I thought to myself, I wonder if that thing's for sale. But I was like, ah, I don't need anything else. <laughs> oh, good times. This truck, I always forget the guy's name. It was featured in Truckin'. 
does anybody remember, is this the one that the guy was going to go crazy on in the late 90s? And he, I think he cut the roof off and then he ended up, you know, it was like before 20s were being really ran on anything mini wise that, um, that the truck was going to be bodied on 20s, but it was going to, it was like Roadster, uh, it, it, real advantageous project back in the street source days. Every time I see this, this paint, it reminds me of that. Eventually I'll dig out that trucking issue and then I'll remember the guy's name. But um, I remember back in the day there was there was that nine or I don't know ninety eight ish blazer, and people were talking about that thing was going to be crazy. Here's the rest of the show and shine ninety eight real clean hard body, and then you got Phil from Low Rollers, the OG Phil Fowler. Always appreciate talking with him, and we'll see him of course at uh, Mini Nats next year. So SEMA 98, uh, I also have video from SEMA 98 from Steve Nielsen. This was one of the baddest Rangers, maybe the baddest Ranger ever built. It doesn't get talked about enough. It was on the cover of Sport Truck. It was also on the cover of another kind of rare, obscure magazine. This thing's got a lot of metal work, and I guess just because it didn't really go to the shows that a lot of us go to, it doesn't get talked about enough, but... I posted that thing in the past. It's really sick. A lot of body work on it, or metal work rather. Uh, this truck is going to be coming up soon on the cover, and uh, this was on the cover of the issue that Rob Scepter's truck was in May '99, and then Rob's turned around um, and came back within a year. So we'll talk more about that. But that truck, I always thought it was real clean. Of course, Rangers galore. But yeah, Craig Elder owned it. I don't know what point he took possession of the truck but matt torgerson thanks matt and others had to reinforce to me because matt i look back at photos of matt's toolbox i had a photo from there i don't know how but i remember that he always had this van but it was in the green version uh taped to his toolbox and then so i think it was green yellow then orange then people have confirmed the orange version we saw dilapidated photos of it and apparently it's it's been taken years ago to the junkyard unfortunately that's the intel that we have but uh, that's when Tom owned it, and uh, Gendro was on recently. He helped body drop, or he did body drop that truck, and um, we didn't get a chance to talk about it too, too much, but we may be having Gendro back on. Here's Paul Morton. Again, we had Paul on. Loves bikes. Loves those old school minis. He was uh, doing a lot of work at Auto Sound and Security at that time. It's crazy to think how many people we have had on. Here's a Pioneer deck install in the zone. Endless pleasures. Clean Toyota. Super clean. Super duper fly. Again, uh, if you guys are liking this, leave a comment. Leave a thumbs up. Really helps out the channel. Slamming and jamming. This is another one that I never made it to. Uh, we, we have a guest from the drop shop coming up. And if I remember correctly, this is the truck that we briefly talk about, the four-door Blazer. Think about Jody Hall and how many trucks he body dropped, and then our friend Matt Torgerson, even on the East Coast. Uh, hopefully, you know, I did exchange some comments back with Matt, and we'll get him on here uh, soon and talk trucks. I mean, he, our friend Matt Torgerson, body dropped a lot of stuff over the years. Got up to the 20s, probably even into the 30s in, tr in terms of trucks he channeled and bodied. But um, that that one reminded me of our upcoming guest here on OLP, which, again, he worked at the Drop Shop. So we've had the Drop Shop soon. We had the Chop Shop recently. And then Matt was the shop. And that was, uh, of course, in Longwood area, Florida. Here you got Crazy Customs, so that ad, you have Alter Images, all the different stuff he sold. Steve Nielsen's still out there doing his own thing, doing the damn thing, rather. Uh, here you have Ty Zito. I think this was, his, yeah, it was his uh, hard body on those wheels that were so famous then. Kind of sought after. The uh, 90 Dodge D50, so Roger Hall's. 
Memphis Aaron Carlin. I believe this is the one that ended up in Severed. I don't know if he was in Severed at the time, but it ends up on the cover. I believe that's the Pro Street truck. Actually pretty certain looking at all the work on it. And then Troy Kelly's Yoda. Uh, this is a good construction zone, though, layout. You know, four trucks, boom. Never Say Die, so this is No Sympathy. Uh, I think there's No Sympathy Japan. I think we recently exchanged some comments and posted some of their stuff back and forth um, for another truck that we recently posted on social media. Speaking of that, if you haven't, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Much appreciated. Here's Ghetto Bob. He makes another appearance in the magazine. I think he's in one of the first street trucks as well. I think I may have went over that issue. I can't believe it. I can't remember if it's the first one or not. So I got some Wu Tang, Wu World in there. Some of the merch, 15 bucks back in the day, McMullen Argus. And then Traders. We talked about that truck not too, too long ago. Look at these wheels, man. These things are tough to come by these days, those dually wheels. So there you have it. Bright Ideas again with Low Glow. This is issue 87. Again, rest in peace, Derek. NC, really badass truck. What did I miss? Anything? Um, if so, please chime in the comments. We really appreciate it. We'll hit you guys with April 99 soon, which is the MIC Blazer with the checkerboards that Doug Starbuck painted. For now, everyone stay on the rise, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. We out ya. Peace.